What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Gamer Duo here. Welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Ultra Moon Genlock. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day. Oh, we're out here. We're killing it. We're going to do our best. Today, we got a little bit of a lax episode, so that's very, very nice to see. Uh, definitely don't have to worry about anything. It's just chilling, getting encounters, and, you know, loving it. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and pull our Mon that's in the box that has to stay in the box onto our team and do a quick team recap because the last episode was a little bit rough. It was a little scary. Um, if you guys didn't check it out, uh, go ahead, hit the I card up above. It's right there. It'll should you shoot you to the playlist where you can see every single episode of this series. So first off, we have Papa the Refrigerating Two Cannon with Liquidation, x Dizzy Punch, and Play Rough. We have Sandy with Liquidation, Headbutt, Moon ba Blast, and Dragon Claw. I kind of wish Sandy was a squirrel. And if you guys don't know why, then uh, that's sad. Um, then we got Dumba Champ, Storm Throw, Brick Break Liquidation, and Cotton Guard. We got the new member of the squad, Nick, the Gothita, with Psy Strike, Moon Geist Beam, Earth Power, and Bolt Switch with Stall as an ability. Which, once we get rid of Stall, once we evolve, Nick, oh my gosh, this thing's about to be a freaking powerhouse. If you guys don't know who Nick is, he's an amazing content creator, Nick Master 92, or Magic Monster, um, out here. And then we got Zayden, level 29, with Thunder Punch, Shadow Sneak, Steamroller, and Waterfall. Honestly, though, my main focus in today's episode is to get a freaking Gen 4 or 6 Mon. We legit still are yet to get or encounter a Gen 4 or 6 Mon. We had a Fion, and we hatched it. That is not encountering. But yes, we are recording at a decent time today as you can see as it's night time in the game so that is fantastic you know that means a lot it means we're motivated today we're ready um actually um, after i record a couple episodes of this series i'm gonna go on a walk and then i might stream uh i don't know what game I, I'm, I'm debating on revisiting the lions rebuild um i'm really i really am because honestly that rebuild is very fun um, but I've also learned a lot because I've been practicing rebuilds and doing all that stuff. But I'm also thinking about doing the encounter stream for Shiny Lock. So I have no idea <laughs> which one I'm going to do. Um, uh, it's crazy because I've been focusing on attack changes and stuff. And so I've been deep diving into Pokemon, but I've also been deep diving into Madden lately. So really both options are really the same for me. Um, wait, we have, we only have six totem stickers. That's freaking hilarious. Like, like we just have not been caring about the totem stickers at all. Um, I'm excited though, because where are we going to be able to get our, uh, today's episode, we won't be getting the fossils, but the episode after we'll be getting our fossils. And so there is a lot that is going to be happening within these next couple episodes, but nothing where I am scared or worried, but yeah. But no, as I've been talking, as I was saying, I've been deep diving into Madden rebounds. I have loved it. I was practicing with the Falcons, as the Falcons are broke, as they are spending all their money on people they shouldn't probably be spending their money on. Um, so, I have been practicing. I finally got them to win a Super Bowl, but it took me until the 2034 season. If you guys don't know, that's 14 years of a rebuild. So, that was a massive rebuild, and I don't really know. I mean, a part of the reason why it took me so long was because I freaking lost three Super Bowls. And I was so upset, because, like, the Super Bowl that I won... It was raining, and because it was raining, the game didn't doesn't have the confetti go on when it's raining, which is kind of dumb. Not gonna lie, because you know that's like the exciting part of winning a Super Bowl, seeing the confetti, seeing everything like go and be crazy. It's like, oh, we won the Super Bowl, and then it's like all you saw was the rain when we won the Super Bowl. We went, we won against Joe Burrow and the uh, uh, freaking whatever the the Bengals. Which is kind of funny that we would win against that team. But to make it to the Super Bowl, it was... I had to go past the Giants, which... Or no, it wasn't. It was the Rams, the Seahawks, and then the Bengals. So it's like, we fought both of my favorite teams. Um, like, my number one team, obviously, is Seattle. Then it goes Cincinnati and Oakland. So, well, actually, Las Vegas. Um, those are my three favorite teams. And uh, it's probably going to be the same forever and ever and ever. But Seattle is definitely always going to be number one. You cannot beat that um no matter what if we have an 0 16 season whatever i'm a seahawks fan for life and i can say that because i've been a fan since 2006 um 
which is the year after we went to the Super Bowl. Um, and I, but you got to keep in mind, in 2006, your boy was seven, so I really wasn't. <laughs> it's like it's not even bandwagoning because I was so young that I just yeah, I had no idea, um, like what was going on at that point, and so. It would be different if I was, like, 30 and I was like, oh, I like them since 2005. Because then you know that. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've experienced some really tough times within Seattle's franchise when they went 5-11, and 4-12, uh, and 12, the beginning of the Pete Carroll era where we're going 7-9. and nine. So, like, we definitely had a lot that we had to learn about, but... Oh, I like how you just literally talk to Lily. Like, what the... Like, there's so much around here. She tells you to ex or talk about the books. I mean, maybe I just did that instantaneously and went to the books. But, like... Is that really all you have to do is talk to the books? Like, did I actually get it right somehow? Or... I'm actually heavily debating with myself if I got that right instantaneously? I highly doubt that I would have gotten that right instantaneously, right? Like, or did I, like, where I hit all the books and talked to all the books and then talked to Lee? Or, I don't know. I'm curious. Let me know in the comment section below if you know the answer to that, because I'm going to be honest, I don't know the answer to that. And you know what? It is fine not knowing the answer to every single question. As long as you don't make too many mistakes, you're good. You know, there's always some mistakes that people can make, but, like, then there's some obvious ones. And it's like, oh, boy. And I have been noticing that a lot lately, where people have just been constantly making mistakes. It's just like, oh my god. And of course, my tendency, right, I have a terrible habit of wanting to help everybody with everybody's problems. But I can't. <laughs> and it's hard for me, though, because, like, I am like, I know the answer to your problem. And, like, ah. and, like I let people know that I, they have the, I have the answer to their problem. But then you know they don't really care. And... It's like, but if you're complaining about this problem to many, many people, and somebody has the solution to your problem, you would think that people would be like, oh yeah, let me let me see what your solution is, or at least talk. No, nope, you just get redlined, and it's like, whatever. It's like, uh, it's been annoying me lately, but I gotta, I've, I've been learning to deal with it, so that's a positive at least. I've been learning to deal with it. It's hard though, because of course, I'm just, I'm so helpful. Just that's my nature. I want to be there for people, um, no matter what. And, ugh. like, and there's been, and it's not just, it's been multiple people l lately now that are like, <sighs> it's just been, ugh. it's, I like, I can't even talk about it because it just makes me angry. Um, and I shouldn't, and I know it shouldn't, right? And that's my, that's, and I know that's exact, that's my problem. Like, if it makes me angry, that's my issue. Um, not anybody else's. But our encounter here, please tell me we get a Gen 4 mod that we can add to the squad. Please, Gen 4, Gen 4. Ah! Wait, is that Gen, nope, that's Gen 5. Mm. I was hoping. I was like, Gen 6, maybe? No, it's Gen 5. Um, and I know that it's my, that's, that's my bad in general. Like, if I'm having an issue with it, um, I just need to, like, brush it off and, like, go with the whatever. But, I don't know. Being such a helpful person is sometimes very exhausting. Um, do we have any kind of status conditioning? I don't think we do. If I'm going to be honest, I don't think we do. Uh, the answer to the question is we do not have any sort of statuses. Um, do I really? I mean, Lightbird is, in theory, very easy to catch. So, I'm going to just toss a quick ball on it. Since we have 10, it should catch and we should be fine. But, yeah, no. It's just like, I want to help and I want to be there. And then, you know, people don't give you the opportunity. So, you know, whatever. Um, it's it's kind of what I'm trying to learn. See, I told you we'd catch it immediately. Um, also, we're going to name this cat after Mama Cat. Um, or we could just name it purely Mama Cat, actually. that That's a good idea because... Uh, I don't, I think, I don't know what our actual mascot is, so, uh, this is definitely gonna be the teaser text, or the teaser for, um, uh, today, this episode, uh, to when it comes out, um, which will probably come out today, but I need to know what Mama Cat's, uh, mascot is, so if anybody knows what Mama Cat's mascot is, leave it in the comment question, or leave it below, because I don't know if I'm gonna need it for Season 3 of Cage Lock, but if I do, that would be very helpful, 
Um, so let's find out. And now we gotta talk to Olivia. Like, I know most of the people in the community's mascot. I'm actually pretty good at remembering people's mascots, but I just have never seen Mama Cat's mascot, you know? So, anyway, we got Olivia talking about all the problems and la la but, you know, she's just, she is actually asking for help, which is step one, is ask for help if you need it. Um, you know, that's the number one step. Now we're gonna go ahead and see what else we could have gotten, but, uh, yeah. Oh, I thought that was a shiny. <laughs> My brain went, like, freaked out for a second. That's not a shiny, John. I, I was thinking Bahium, not Elgium. And yeah, that was a that was like a oh my god moment. Like I thought we had it, and then I realized it's not the right Pokemon. So oh, that could have been good though. That but again, it was a Gen Five mod, so I wouldn't have been able to use it anyway. Speaking of, I need the next next moment I have in a PC. I need to put Mama Cat in the PC. Oh, I could have had this thing. That would have been fantastic. That would have been a freaking great addition to the team. Although, we don't necessarily need a water type, because we already have, like, the best one. Um, other than my mascot, obviously. But, you know. It happens. Um, but it's, yeah, like, mm, we, like, I cannot believe that there is a high likelihood that we will go 20 episodes without encountering a gen four or six mon like how like gen four is one of the gens that have like the most pokemon in it and yet i still have not managed to encounter one that's a mega <laughs> yeah. um that would have been a great flying type but again that's generation one and we have a champ for that so uh that would have been a good that would have been a good good mon though like i'm not gonna lie that not would have not made me mad at all um but yeah, hopefully we can kind of see what's up. Um, definitely interested. But yeah, so how, I guess common question of the day. How has your day been? What have you been up to? Um, my answer to that is I've been hanging out, chilling, kind of not really worrying about anything. I played an amazing game of Phase 10 with my mother today. That was fantastic. Um, and I just, I had a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully I will be able to initiate it and ask to play a game again because that was really fun. Um, and then after recording, I'm gonna go on a walk. Uh, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna play Pokemon Go. Um, and then, well, I'm gonna play Pokemon Go. And Pokemon Go is gonna be fun because it's my favorite generation being highlighted. So we're gonna be catching all of them in Sinnoh Pokemon. Um, and then, yes, Sinnoh's my favorite generation. I've said it like a thousand times, and I will continue to vouch for it because it's number one. Gen 5 is number two, but, um, I will vouch for it all day long. Um, like, literally, I will argue why it's the best generation for Pokemon. Now, I will give people that the gameplay for Sinnoh is slow. I will give you that. But a lot of Pokemon games are like that. And I, I enjoy the spaciousness of the game. Like, I love space out stuff. And I talked about this when I talked about my favorite gens. So if you guys want to check that out. It is going to be up in the iCard as well on that specific episode because I don't want to repeat topics um, as much. Like, I'm trying to create content that feels fresh, feels new every episode. And, like, I don't know. It just, if I repeat the same topics over and over again, it's not fun. And, actually, Jonas and I had a long conversation about that, which was really kind of fun. Um, about why, like, like why we, it's like... It, do, we, it doesn't make sense to neither Jonas or I to... Oh my gosh, that's Savali. Wait, whoa. I didn't... I've never encountered Savali in the wild before. That's a new one. That, that See, we all have new experiences. This is one for me. I did not know that Savali would just randomly appear in a different color like Arceus. I... Yeah. That's that's cool, but no. Jonas and I were talking about this the, like uh, last week because we went on a walk, keeping our distance and all that stuff, keeping it safe to the guidelines, and <clears throat> like we were talking about why like people repeating themselves are appealing to people because to us it's not like I cannot sit in a room or not sit in a room, but I cannot 
Why is Dizzy Pop? Oh, because I refrigerate. Bruh, John, you knew that you had refrigerate. Why did you not think about that? It's because even if I do a team recap, I'm going to forget everything. We all know this. The team recap is really for the audience more so than it is for me because I'm literally going to forget my team no matter what I do anyway. So <laughs> it's really for the audience. Um, same with the layout. Like, the layout makes it look pretty, though. I like the layout. But, yeah, no. It's just weird that people find that entertaining. Like, the same... Like, I can't. Okay, Hyper Fang has 80. Oh, it's 98% accurate. I'm not going to learn it. I'd rather the accuracy. I am definitely somebody who's accuracy over power. 10 times out of 10. Um, but, yeah, no. I just... Mm, I repeat, like... I, I can't go for that. Like, like and some content, too almost like it sometimes it feels like people are wringing out like water from clothing like or like rags or wringing out rags or something like that where they like squeeze content till it's dry until there's nothing left and it's like ah like that facial reaction was literally the embodiment of how i feel with that kind of content and i have definitely learned over the years how much that is annoying like, and I can, I will vouch for it. Like, a lot of the Clash of Clans content, like, I've been watching some of it lately because I've been playing Clash of Clans. I've been back into it, getting everything kind of set up. I got to Town Hall 10. Uh, I've been playing this game for five years, by the way, but on and off. So, there's a reason why I'm Town Hall 10, because I'm a free-to-play person. I don't like spending additional money in games. I feel like it's pretty pointless. Um, other, unless you have, like, Google Play, like, the cards, like, you were gifted Google Play cards or something like that, that's different. Um, but, like, I am definitely one of, 100%, like, a free-to-play kind of person. Um, so I don't invest in that kind of stuff. And so, I don't know, it's just, mm, like, a lot of it's, like, let me show you this three-star attack strategy. Let me show you this exact same three-star attack strategy with one little variance like that is like it's like repetitive content and there's only one clash of clans creator that i've really haven't felt like they have been running it dry running it ragged um because he does like a bunch of different things at the same time and that's kenny joe um where he literally does not like repeat very much he has multiple different kinds of series going on and I, that variance to me is important. That's a shiny Edo King. Let's go. Um, how has a Verizion? Let's go. <laughs> Even better. Let's go. I, I appreciate it. I hate the fact that Verizion, you have that. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, thank God. Oh, <laughs> I thought, I thought for a moment that that was about to transform into the Verizion, and we already had problems with that before. So we definitely didn't need problems with that again. Although that Vanillish is actually looking like a threat. Um, because that is an ice type and it could throw down with anything. And I don't want to lose Papa. Uh, Nido? Oh, you... Oh, shoot. This is where having a diverse moveset is actually terrible. Because, as you can see, I have one of the most diverse movesets I could have. Also, he has Refrigerate now. So he's got a Water... Uh, water, bug, ice, and fairy move. So he is stacked. Um, oh boy. Um, although I did learn something new in that sequence was that if you're a shiny mon and you have imposter, you're going to lose your shininess, which is kind of sad. Not going to lie. Um, I am actually going to go ahead and, oh, but free, freeze dry could wreck me um, and open up a new one. Uh, oh. Actually, you don't have a flying move. I'm going to go into Machamp, Daddy and the Machamp. Um, that seems like the best option now that I look at uh, this more realistically. Um, because with no flying move, I shouldn't be worried. Also, bite? Why? I mean, oh, I mean, it caused a flinch. Um, the ice move actually did go for me. What the? That did so much damage. Okay, I knew it wasn't going to be resisted. But I also didn't think I was going to do that much. Like, I'm so glad I stayed in. But, yeah, being a physical wall is kind of scary. I'm going to go ahead and Cotton Guard. 
I think that's my best bet. Kind of neutralize the amount of damage done to me. Hopefully. There we go. As long as this bird doesn't crit, we're good. If the bird crits, we're in a terrible scenario. Um, come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Play rough, play rough, play rough. Why do I have such a diverse moveset? That's all I'm asking myself right now. It's that having that diversity in my moveset is literally killing me right now. It's 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 bad. It's bad that that's actually biting me in the butt. Because in nine ninety nine point nine percent of scenarios, that would be fantastic, and you would be loathing it. But in the scenario that I'm in right now, I am literally regretting the fact that I have a such a diverse moveset. Um, because why are you attacking me? There's literally a Verizion. I'm not as big of a threat as a Verizion. Like, my gosh, I should not be registered as a harder or a more, a bigger threat. If I'm going to be honest, like, in my opinion, a Machamp is a much less of a threat than a Verizion is. Especially when you have two moves super effective against the thing, and the Verizion is the only one that can do damage. Like, this Verizion is being registered as not a threat. Unless it got burned. Yeah, look at that. You attacked me again. Unless it would have gotten burned. That I, that's the only scenario in which I would say uh, the Machamp is a bigger threat. But we're going to go ahead and double team this Nido King unless I get hit in confusion, which I totally could. Yep. Dang. It's almost like I called it. Uh, but yeah, play rough. Okay, yay! You're attacking the Verzion now, and the Verzion's dead. I am so lucky that I. Oh, no! Now I'm 100% the bigger threat. Uh-oh. That's bad. Uh, I am definitely going to be the designated threat. Dang it, how? Why are you so annoying? Like, literally, I could die right now because... Okay, good. A Caterpie? Like, how is that going to help me in any sense of the word? It doesn't. It literally will not help me at all that you have a Caterpie. And please just have, like, Flare Blitz... That's all I ask. Just get Flare Blitz. Caterpie, like... Just die. Get Game Pack. That's fine. That's weird, but that's... Caterpie almost took out the vanilla -ish. Please tell you that... Please tell me that does recoil damage. It does not. Dang it, I was thinking Double Edge. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the vanilla -ish, though. That uh, eliminates that threat unless we miss or hit ourselves in confusion, which we did again. Yay! Uh, Ember is gonna kill the Caterpie, too. Please send out a threat. How... If you send out another trash mon, Torkoal. Okay. Hmm. In this scenario, whose value is the bigger threat? <sighs> I would say Machamp is at that point. I think Machamp would be the bigger threat. Um, because there's no sun up. So, but still, I, why didn't he send out the Torkoal in the first place? Like, he went. Oh, let's go ahead and send out our Caterpie over a Torkoal against a Vanillish. That sounds like a great play. And it's just like. It's like, I love you, how, but why in the world would you ever think a Caterpie is better than a Torkoal in this instance? <sighs> we love the AI. It makes me so happy, and it doesn't make me angry at the slightest. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get something from him. Max Ethers. Please give me more of those. If if how gave me Max Ethers instead of Revives, I would love how so freaking much. Like, I would not get mad at how if he did that. I'm gonna be straight up. Like, I would not be like hating on how if he gave me max elixirs. Um, in a Nuzlocke style. Because max elixirs are actually amazing, and I'm gonna keep those for the duration of the Nuzlocke. Um Cause y'all know we have live finales. We're not even close to that right now, but y'all know that when the finale when it is finale time, we're gonna have a live finale. So it'll be fun, definitely. Oh, a trial goer you are. Looker is the name. I've traveled the world in many lands for private reasons. Alola is a nice place, so peaceful, most ideal vacancy. I was just in Coney Coney City where uh, I have the most unusual stone at Miss Olivia's shop. No one here is so terrible as to try and create a new world or liberate Pokemon from their trainers. Yes! 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 Oh my god. Yes! Oh, that makes me so happy. Like... You don't know how happy that makes me. Like, I am literally smiling right now. Like, that's amazing. They literally included a freaking 
Easter egg. That's like, that makes me so happy. Like, I love Easter eggs like that. And like, literally it brightens my day seeing those kind of things. So that's my kind of story. It's little gimmicky things here and there that like point to previous games. Like that is what I love. That exact thing is stuff that that is the kind of things that I cherish um, is those like moments, those scenarios where it's like, oh, do you remember what happened with this like a long, long time ago? And it's like, oh my gosh, I, yeah. Like, isn't that like, oh my gosh, yes. Please do more of that, Game Freak. Like, please, I would love Game Freak to do more of that kind of stuff. No crits. Okay. Or freezes. We love getting frozen. It makes my day. Um, why? Like, the last... Uh, cage lock, I'm getting frozen. Freaking versus, I'm getting frozen. Like, I would prefer not to get frozen if I could, <laughs> if I could decide that. Especially with those big 10% chances. Unless it's Serene Grace, then it's 20, but... Still, like, this is neutral. And I got crit, you know? But, ah, uh, it's, it's really fun to kind of have this. This is actually a weird, one of those weird longer episodes of Genlock. Not gonna lie. I was like, oh, these episodes typically run 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. And yeah, they do, but this episode's running like closer to 30. Uh, but luckily, what we're gonna do is go into Coney Coney Island and end the episode. So we're really actually almost at the end. And we have a lot that we have to do. And also, I was thinking about it today. And so we have the Route 9, which we can get, which is fantastic. We have fossils that we get to buy, which is also amazing. We also, in this game, have the Ditto 5. So I'm actually super excited. We're going to get a lot of encounters in the next episode. So the next episode is another really encounter-centralized episode. Very excited to see kind of where uh, everything will lie. Um, but I appreciate you guys all for watching. You guys make my day. You guys know it. And I love you all so much. Keep it up. You guys are super important. And you guys are amazing. Uh, I love you guys all so much. We're going to go ahead and heal and end the episode. But make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Next episode goes out tomorrow. Um, I'm definitely going to be recording it so that we can just uh, do a mass edit. And so uh, episodes will go up as slated. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And we're going to go ahead and put our live part in the box. But love you all. Peace.